Families, friends, and millions of Nigerians heaved a sigh of relief on October 5 when stories filtered that abductors of the 23 remaining passengers of the Abuja Kaduna train have released them. The victims had spent over six months in the bush in terrible condition. However, despite claims by the government that no ransom was paid for the release of the remaining captives, there are speculations that some families paid as high as $200,000 for the release of their loved ones. Others say that about 100 million naira was paid per abductee. This will be the focus of our conversation tonight, including how the negotiation for the release of the abductees was carried out. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. I'm Hamza Idris. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the conversation commences. Do stay. Welcome back. Tonight, we are joined by the Secretary of the Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee, charged with the responsibility of negotiating with the, uh, for the release of the Kaduna train abductees, Professor Usman Yusuf. Welcome, Prof. Thank you very much for yes. having me. Prof is also the former Executive Secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS. We're happy having you in the studio. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, until after the release of the remaining 23 uh, abductees, not much was heard about this uh, uh, Chief of Defense Staff Committee. What was happening? Yeah, that's how it should be. <laughs> okay. With all the noise in the background, we were doing our work. And we started, uh, so this, this terrible attack happened on the 28th of March this year. Yeah. And on the 29th of March, the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, General Lucky Ravoy, assembled us to see how we can help the, the non-kinetic arm. You mean just a day after the incident? Absolutely. And we've been, we've been at it since then. We've spent our cellar and we've been away from our families for six months. So, and it's always better when you're doing things like this for it to be quiet while the noise continues. Once in a while you see me breaking my cover and talking, but not about the work. So that's how it's supposed to be and the result achieved is, is what is what we hoped for and what we got. But yes, the, the reason I'm going around media houses and talking is to let uh, Nigerians know that, and I've seen it, watching it, that the government wasn't doing anything. The government doesn't care. The military doesn't care. We, uh, but the honest truth, I know that because I've been involved for six months, a day after it happened. Wow. We were in panel, 29th. We've been working, meeting family members, going into the forest, sending interlocutors, and, and meeting everybody. So what happened on the 5th of October was not the singular effort of one person or one group. It's everybody. Okay. Everybody came in. If anybody but before we get to that, who yeah. were the other members of, of this group? The uh, honorable gentlemen that have served this nation in various capacities in this country and they've offered their services again as volunteers to see what they can do among the group of course uh, three retired generals that have General served Zindia. absolutely that have served to the highest level of this this military in uniform the three of them between them they have cumulatively give they gave a hundred years of service to this country. Wow. 35 years, 35 years, and 30. The three generals. Absolutely. Not only in Nigeria, but abroad in conflict zones. They're offering their services to see how they can be of help mm -hmm. and trying to see how they can be a bridge between the kinetic and the akinetic component. And then we have academic, we have a diplomat that has worked in intelligence, you have uh, uh, Fulani Elder, we, we were assembled for a very good reasons. Everybody brought in 
enrich the group from all their experiences. And this is the result we got. It's not but, one but, person, but, but everybody. How were you convinced that there was good intention? From whom? From the chief of defense staff. No, 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 no. We've never doubted his intention. He's an honorable man. man. We met him, we saw he's not anyone you can approach. You have to gauge the person and see that this is a person you can do business with. We've never doubted his intention and he embraced us from day one and escalated the idea to the president who gave uh, his support and approval to go ahead. And that did not in any way stop the military from continuing their kinetic component. So this is the akinetic part of the war. Yeah, that, and that is the question I wanted to ask, whether it was actually um, wholly a military operation. It is a military operation because we civilians, there's no way we could have done what we did without the military. None. And there's no way I can walk up to the president or any civilian can walk up to the president and say, I will do this. No. It is, it is primarily a military problem that conceived and guided by the chief of defense staff all through. What we got when we deployed into the, into the field, we were supported all throughout by the military. But I want to know this. Was it that all of you had a certain connection before you were brought on board by the chief of defense staff or they picked you individually? No, we, we, you don't need any connection to do good. Okay. And it's not anyone that wants to risk his life and go into the forest and do that without being paid. People want to be paid for that. They say, no, we, we, that's not why we're here. We offered our services. We offered our services. You mean pro bono? Absolutely. Prof, but there are allegations that um, lots of money has changed hands among you. The, 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 yeah, people are just saying that. Maybe I mean, you maybe. clear the air? Maybe they don't know me. Okay. I left an agency, National Health Insurance Scheme, that has more money than all these governors running around. Money has never been. Your motivation? My, absolutely. Not me, not any of the six other honorable men in this, in this, in this committee. You were seven in the group? Absolutely. And there the... is, let me tell you. All right. No amount of money. No amount of money. Nobody can pay any one of us to do what we did. We did it for this, our country because this is our country.